Muhammad said, I am content. Then he said to Fatima, God has announced to me a child who will be born of you and whom my community after me will kill. Fatima said to him, I have no need of a child from me whom your community after you will kill. Muhammad said to her, God has already placed in his descendants the imamate, the authority and the testament. And she said to him, I am content. So this story is one of the major narratives of Hussein's conception and birth, told in slightly different ways, in which Muhammad receives from God, from Jibrail, this visitation in which he is warned that this grandchild before he is even born is going to be killed by his own community, by the Prophet's own community. There's, there's another one in which the Prophet is sitting in the house of Fatima and Ali with Al Hussein on his lap and he is visited by Jibrail. Muhammad begins to weep and Fatima is confused by his weeping and he says that in that very hour he has seen God in the most beautiful form, the Ahsan Surah. God questions Muhammad about his love for Hussein, Al Hussein, and Muhammad says, He is the delight of my eye. He is my sweet basil. He is the fruit of my heart. He is the skin between my eyes. God then places his hand on Al Hussein's head, saying that his blessings and prayers and mercy and favor are upon the boy, but announcing that he is the master of all martyrs from the first to the last. In very similar traditions, Muhammad is given some of the soil of Karbala, red soil, the place where Al Hussein will be martyred. And in still other traditions, it is sometimes Jibreel or God who comes and makes this announcement. Nevertheless, we have a whole list of hadith in which Muhammad, by a vision, is forewarned about the murder of his grandson. We also have a group of, a category of hadith found in the stories of angels, sometimes alone, but sometimes in groups, often in very curious shapes and forms, visiting the Prophet in various places, most often in the house of Umm Salama, one of his wives. And they come to console him about the death of Hussein, which has not yet taken place. The great Islamic scholar Ibn Ta'us writes, a full year after the birth of Al-Hussein, twelve angels came down to the Messenger of God, one in the form of a lion, one in the form of a bull, one in the form of a dragon, and the fourth in the form of a child of Adam. The remaining eight in various forms. Their faces were red, their eyes were wet with tears, and having spread their wings, they said, O Muhammad, what happened to Abel through Cain will happen to your child Al-Hussein, son of Fatima. He will receive the same recompense as Abel, and his killers will bear the same responsibility as Cain. There remained in the heavens not an angel drawn near who did not come down to the Prophet, each of them greeting him, consoling him about Al Hussein. They informed him about the reward he would receive, showed him his tomb, and Muhammad said, O oh God, forsake those who forsake him, and kill those who kill him. So. You have at your disposal, we have a whole series of hadith and texts which simply deal with the prophecies of Al Hussein's martyrdom before he is even born. Even some of the Sunni transmitters, the famous transmitter Al Khawarizmi has this book called Maktal Al Hussein, the murder of Hussein. And he himself, because he has a love for the Ahl Bayt, relates many of these from different sources. Even Ibn Hanbal and the other Sunni Al Nizaburi Al-Tabari, these men who are Suri transmitters, they relate the same stories in different settings of the prediction of Hussein's martyrdom. One final example is that they are the dreams of people. One of these dreams of a woman named Umm Al-Fadl is recorded by the Sunni in the Shia texts. Says that she went to the Messenger of God and said, O oh, Messenger of God, tonight I had a shocking dream. And he said, What was it? She said, it was terrible. And he repeated, what was it? And she said, I saw what seemed to be a piece of your body cut off and placed in my lap. The Prophet said, you saw something good. Fatima will give birth to a boy and he will be in your lap. Fatima gave birth to Al-Hussein and Umm Al-Fadl said, he was in my lap, just as the Messenger of God had said he would be. So this dream that she has is really quite ominous. But in fact, the Prophet reinterprets it and makes it, makes it positive. 
But nonetheless, the tradition continues with a warning from Jibreel and with Muhammad once again in tears over the death of his grandson. But that's not the point of the tradition. It really shows the relationship between the Imam and the Prophet. There are a number of Sunni scholars who relate the same dream, this time of Ibn Abbas, in which he sees Muhammad collecting the blood of Hussein in a container. And a dream of Umm Salama in which he sees the Prophet weeping, putting dust on his head after he has been forewarned. Well, those are, are the dreams. If I could offer you one more interesting legend found in some of the Shia Hadith. It is the legend of the angel who is called Futrus. This tradition is, is worth examining just because it's very, very rare. It, it is about an angel called Futrus who God has banished. And Jibreel, on his way to Muhammad to forewarn him about Hussein, passes the place where Futrus the angel has been banished. And Futrus wants to accompany Jibreel and announce to the Prophet the news of this grandson. When Al Hussein was born, the tradition says, God ordered Jibreel to descend with a crowd of angels to congratulate Muhammad. He descended and he passed an island on which there was an angel called Futrus. God had sent him to do something, but Futrus had delayed, so God broke his wings and cast him on that island where he had served God for 700 years. Futrus said, O oh, Jibrail, where are you going? And he said to Muhammad. Futrus said, Carry me with you to Muhammad, perhaps he will pray for me. When Jibrail came to the Prophet and informed him of the situation of Futrus, the Prophet said to him, tell him to rub his wings against the child Hussein. So Futrus rubbed his wings against the cradle of Al Hussein and at once was healed. And then he, was, he ascended with Jibrail to heaven. And he was named the liberated slave of Al Hussein. Again, the story is important because it underlines for us the miraculous nature of this baby. Long before Karbala, even in the womb of his mother, already there is something special about Al Hussein. And finally, there is a great deal of angelic activity around his birth. Let me end by saying this, that the Al Hussein who is born, is born already cleansed and purified by God. He is born of a virgin, Fatima. And he is touched as a newborn infant by the wings of Jibril. Fatima's grief for him begins already in her pregnancy with him because she knows already then that her son will be a martyr. So that in his conception and in his birth, Al Hussein brings distress and he brings heartbreak as well as joy. And that distress and that heartbreak is transmitted by the Sunni historian Al-Baghdadi and a few of the later Shia scholars in this very sad story. Abu Al-Abbas said, I was with the Prophet. On his left knee he had his son Ibrahim. On his right, Al-Hussein bin Ali. He was kissing first to one and then the other. And then Jibrail descended to him with revelation from the Lord of the Worlds. When he had gone, Muhammad said, Jibreel came to me from my Lord and said, Muhammad, your Lord greets you with peace and says that you cannot have both of them. Ransom one of them for his companion. The Prophet looked at his son Ibrahim and wept, and he looked at his son Al Hussein and wept, and he said, The mother of Ibrahim is a slave. When he dies, no one will grieve for him except for me. But the mother of Al Hussein is Fatima, and his father is Ali, son of my uncle, my flesh, my blood. And when he dies, my daughter will grieve, and so will Ali, and so will I. I prefer my grief to theirs. So Jibreel, take Ibrahim. And he ransomed Al Hussein with Abraham. And he said he died after three days, and whenever the Prophet saw Al Hussein coming, he kissed him and hugged him to his chest, and said, I have ransomed the one I have ransomed with my son Ibrahim. Now I am over 15 minutes so I have to stop. Allah.